All right, welcome back to the uh, part two of um, transitioning from uh, theoretical to practical in organic chemistry. We talked about some uh, foundational physical um, motions and how that is connected with the structure. So the basically the small chemical we are trying to uh, put in a instrument, we can detect certain type of a motion with a certain frequency using specific uh, light source. So these instruments, IR, NMR, UV, X-ray, or um, mass spectrometry, they are using different source of forces. First of all, they're using photons, and the last one, they're using a magnetic force instead of um, mostly electric field, like these uh, first four. So with the analogy here, the chemicals, um, different parts and different um, object in the molecule, you can stimulate them with the stronger input electromagnetic force and then they interact somehow and then the um, the motion of the uh, you know elements in the molecule they also change but the light also get changed and come out as an output then we have detector and the processors to give us a certain uh, signal so we can uh, interpret them and connect that uh, with the structural feature then uh, we try to get some concept of what uh, frequencies we're talking about so we had a different size of the nuclei having different rotation so uh, different rotation frequency will give you the uh, different frequencies of uh, fluctuation and also vibration with the different atoms and different types of bond will give you different vibration uh, of electric field as well as the bending therefore in the sample you expect variety of vibration frequency is present there and it depends on what we want to detect we choose certain input frequency and uh, expecting some sort of interaction then we'll detect what is coming out of that uh, sample to find out what we have there so IR use infrared to detect the vibration but in the vibration um, the uh, rotation motion is coupled with it so if you analyze it uh, in depth you can get some information about the um, rotation and the NMR also uh, you can detect the uh, different nuclei but with the same nuclei we more focused on little difference of the same nuclei in one uh, same molecule and that is uh, coupled with the neighbors so the neighbors those uh, you know certain part of the um, molecule you are observing the neighbors also will influence the particular interested uh, part of the atom so you also can detect those uh, neighbors motion here with the NMR. When you do UV, yes, you are detecting the frequency of the electron. Also, the um, UV is coupled with the vibration, so there is some connection there. And with the X ray, you are getting some sort of a visual structure. Uh, that's the area where the electron density is found so you know you can get the picture ish um, data
However, the um, x-ray data is only possible with a certain type of sample. It used to be only a single crystal with a very uh, pure and uh, so repetitive, nice crystal. However, these days we start to get um, you know, ways of getting x-ray even for certain liquid form. So that's very nice. For mass spec, uh, we also can uh, measure not structure in the uh, uh, as a prime uh, data, but you know molecular weight. However, uh, some of the techniques in the mass spec, you can get the a certain structural feature as well. With this, um, before I actually start uh, our main um, point of the video, I like to be a chemist for just a couple minutes. When you look at this um, paper, you can see strong acid and some potential bases, right? You have uh, oxygen could act as a base, um, obviously chlor chlorine as well. Then double bond pi electron can act as a base. So if you have these uh, two chemicals with the moles of them, you can imagine some interaction, electrostatic interaction. So the H plus as an acid, it will attract electron. I'm talking about reaction arrow, not the electric field. So with the influence of the electric field that's coming out of the positives or going into the negatives, they either have a repulsion or attraction. This is a repulsion electric uh, field um, lines, but you can also look up the repulsive electric field situation in the um, general physics book. But anyway, um, if this is a position right there, you can calculate the force that this little hydrogen feel from this heavy gigantic molecules. So the closer one will give more repulsion or uh, attraction. So as you can see, the same charge is located there. So they have some repulsion going on. So this will be pushed away from this guy and this guy and this guy. But they are closer ones. So they are influencing this um, H plus more in pushing it away. However, there is attraction here and here in about same distance so as this one trying to go away from these and uh, this as well this has to get closer to these two so if you imagine this hydrogen plus will be probably going away from the paper and then going high high and then come over here somewhere here then this will feel up in the hair, uh, air right here uh, it will feel attraction there attraction there start to feel repulsion if you want to get too close to them so somewhere in the middle you will have to settle where you feel maximum attraction and minimum repulsion so the H plus will stay so I hope um, you start to see chemistry with some physics there and our earlier um, initial videos when we discussed the potential energy we um, sort of um, did uh, you know uh, discussion in this um, spirit okay back to the main point how does the light and matter interact so we can understand how the information of the structure get carried on the photon. Let's take a look at the electromagnetic particle, the photon. Here I have on the plane of paper Y axis showing positive, negative electric field up and down and again electric field is a basically force electric force that's given 
to the charged particle of unit one unit plus one or negative one so um, if the particle any particle say plus charge is placed here right there in the middle of the um, mountain then it will be feeling this much of a, a positive charge this way so the positive charge will be pushed because they're same charge this way very strong if the plus particle is placed here in the middle of the mountain then the strength of the force given to the charge is less weaker the same direction vector direction but less uh, force given to the particle so it will be pushed weaker so you can understand if light is touching with the wave going down then that particle positive charge particle will be attracted this way so let me try to mimic what's happening to this electron pretended electron this is negatively charged okay so photons passing by with a plus and minus so it is here right now so as a photon comes with a certain frequency it is going to be pushed this way pulled this way and it's going to be doing this but if you give higher frequency photon then it's going to be doing this faster vibration okay so here i have listed some types of uh, photons x-ray gamma ray x-ray uh, ultraviolet visible infrared microwave that's used for radar and the tv radio wave and in terms of the wavelength like when it's making one full turn how long in the space is this so um, nanometer is like 10 to the negative 9 um, UV is between 200 to 400 nanometer while these x-rays and gamma rays are smaller than 0.1 nanometer and then visible light you need to memorize um, 400 to 700 and then infrared is normally um, under 700 but more uh, higher uh, energy smaller wavelength than 10,000 then radio waves are um, between 10 to the 10 to 10 to the 12 nanometer which is very long about a meter or sometimes a couple hundred meter uh, wavelength and as a chemist we are concerned about frequency as well as we discuss the uh, energy level of the uh, photon not only the wavelength so um, frequency is normally given by hertz which is the uh, how many uh, how many times you uh, you repeat per second but this wave number that we use for infrared spectroscopy um, you convert the hertz to the reciprocal centimeter and um, which means how many waves are in one centimeter while each um, photon has this long wave so infrared normally 14,000 to 100 so because these have very short wave num uh, wavelength you can have many waves in one centimeter but these long waves 
can have only like a hundred of them in one centimeter in the space. Okay, let's go back to the uh, analogy with electron. So if this is electron without feeling any um, potential energy, now you are giving these lights. So those UVs or higher energy lights compared to the others, you are expecting this to have very short wave number, right? wavelength meaning it is vibrating faster so when it when i uh, travel if electron travel with the same frequency you have repeating in such a short space but if you talk about like some centimeter or meter size of the wave as I vibrate, I travel much because speed of light, whether you are UV or IR, it's the same. It travels at the same speed, but they are vibrating as they travel. So this has shorter wavelength than this so as you can see if you give a certain wavelength of the photon the object like an electron is getting pushed and pulled at the same frequency so the frequency of the photon frequency of the object that it's that's getting affected they will have same frequency however the actual electron in the molecule they're not free they are already in a certain frequency they're not static in the beginning so we need to uh, look at that real situation later on but let's uh, focus on our photon. Here, I want you to find this inversely related um, two terms, wavelength and the frequency. If a wave has a long wavelength, then that uh, wave has a short small sorry small uh, frequency as you can see here the small short wavelength will have a more frequency longer wavelength has less frequency it makes sense because it's small wave so you can put many of them in a given time or in a given space. Then we need to relate these terms or the concepts of the motion um, to the energy in kilocalorie per mole. So the UV that has a 200 nanometer consider very short wavelength light will carry 143 kilocalorie per mole this is very high energy because most of the um, sigma bond of organic compound they are around 100 or less kilocalorie mostly then for the visible it's around 70 kilocalorie ish so daily life in your daily life if you are under sun, you get some UV that hurts your skin covalent bond, but uh, you get hit by 70 kilocalorie light also. Most of the time your carbon-carbon-carbon uh, hydrogen bonds are stronger than this, but some bonds like a peroxide, they are weaker than this. Infrared. 
it's around a couple tens of kilocalorie per mole and uh, your hydrogen bond is roughly 10 kilocalorie and uh, polar dipole interactions are weaker than this so infrared is corresponding to some of the uh, uh, hydrogen bond energy and the uh, microwave it carries of uh, one kilocalorie per mole so I hope you can convert um, the uh, energy to the uh, wavelength or wave number or vice versa from the uh, wave length to the energy using this formula so I simplified it if you were gonna use wavelength in nanometer you simply divide 2.86 times 10 to the 4 by wavelength in nanometer, then you get the energy in kilocalorie per mole. So in order to uh, conceptualize these wavelength and you know, wave number, frequency, energy with the actual motion, uh, let's go over this column over here when you talk about UV remember we have to choose UV to uh, select the motion of the electron as you can see here the electron and orbital motion normally fall into the UV frequency which is happening in pico or femtosecond 10 to the negative 12 or 15th such a short period of time electrons are moving that fast so in order to do something for fast moving electron you have to use uv that has a, such a short up and down so fast moving uh, alternating polarity you need to use as a tool then um, that also takes place for some of the uh, visible uh, range light because we can design compound in a way that the electron can uh, have uh, such a longer like twi twice or more longer wave length then those uh, infrared and microwave that's the uh, corresponding uh, wave length or frequency for the vibration of small molecules and rotations okay they are as fast as a femto but it could be nano and a microsecond depends on their size and the mass of the um, atoms that's constituting that molecule and then the um, electro spin not spinning around the orbital but electron spin itself like this spinning you know uh, the electrospin or, or nuclear spin that falls into the microsecond range and that's corresponding to the radio wave. So as an organic chemist, you need to have the concept of time scale. When you have fast reaction, we normally refer to the reaction that gets finished in 10 to the 3 seconds, about 1000 seconds. So that's corresponding to a few minutes less than say you know 10 20 minutes but uh, if it takes more than a few hours it's considered slow reaction so for even fast chemical reaction it takes few minutes then what can happen internally the electrons can move around because it takes like 10 to, 10 to the negative 15 seconds. In one second, the electron can go around 10 to the 15 times. And the vibration, the atoms can vibrate or the single bond in the Newman projection, it can spin around in this time scale. So it could do minimum 10 to the 6 times, million times it can spin around. In one second so before a certain chemical reaction taking place you can imagine a lot of rotations and vibrations of the bond and the electron in the pi 
having resonance happening in organic reaction. So please remember, in chemical reaction, vibration, rotation, and uh, resonance takes place all the time, thousands and thousands of times before one chemical find the other chemical and do bimolecular reactions such as SN2E2 or addition reaction. Even somewhat faster intramolecular reaction is taking place at the speed of vibration and the rotation. If you think about it, if something's going to react internally, you need to have, say, this red nucleophile attacking this black ball. You cannot bend the bond. That's important, impossible. You need to turn and turn, turn, and attack. So rotation. So, so the rate determining in that particular step is the rotation speed. Sometimes it could be how fast this red is vibrating and the hit. So it was a little sidetracking again. Okay, we talked about the light. Light has the electric field. And I haven't talked about the, the other part, the magnetic field. N, S, N, S, N, S pole. In terms of Newton, force wise, it is about, it depends, but a thousand times weaker than electric force given to the compound. So we normally ignore in chemistry, but sometimes the, all the setup is requiring magnetic force. Then uh, we will get into the discussion with the magnetic field. For now, let's look at these three modes of um, motions in the chemicals that we talked about before. We have a bond with the two atoms and that's vibrating. We have nuclei spinning. We have an electron spinning. So IR, NMR, and uh, UV. All right, for IR, You see the partial positive and negative. Without those partial charges, will the electric field able to interact with the bonding? No. So you know, the IR is only active, selectively active for polar compound and polar bond. If the bond is neutral, the light is going to be ignored, so they cannot interact. That's the one of the keys. Polarity. You got to have charge. Well, nuclei has charge. Electron has charge. So it is more important for IR that you consider polarity when you read your spectrogram. Now, it's not single electron like previous uh, um, analogy I gave you with the electron. You have two bodies with the two charges. So as light pass through, say your electric field of the photon at the moment of passing through this bond happen to be on the you know apex of the mountain, then you feel strong pushing positive this way, the negative the other way. So what's happening? 
pushing up, pulling down. You are going, you are stretching it and then photon pass away. So it is going to be vibrating faster. So you are basically changing the vibrational mode. And I hope you remember that I said the input is going to be changed. But also the um, object will change as well. So here you have two modes, simply speaking, of the interaction of two waves. The wave of the vibration and the wave of the photon electric field. The vibration wave of the bond is also electric field. So when the red, which is the photon electric field, is going upward, meaning it is pushing this way in various intensity at the very same moment if this hydrogen or small atom was moving same direction then the, that vector you know pushing vector of the photon and the pushing moving this way vector of the atom they add up it's like basically two forces going same direction. So vectors just simply add up. So you are expecting greater intensity of the vibration. So it was a vibrating same incident. Light comes with the same vibration, same phase, just pushes more. But if that happened to be the opposite case, light electric field is going this way, but vibration electric field is going the other way, then it will just slow down or completely cancel. Then what does that mean? When there was an object moving and the other object come and hit, what could happen? The second object, if everything is perfect, right, is going to give its kinetic energy to this uh, preceding object and this will stop, but this gains, you know, additional kinetic energy, so it moves even faster and it stops the object is a matter it stopped but in terms of energy force what happened the energy the force that was in this object was there because inertia is carrying it but the moment this object hit this object here the force disappeared because it transferred to this object so if you uh, apply this concept to this, when photon hit the object, the photon energy disappear and photon is not an object. So there is no object at all. It was a pure force, pure energy. So as soon as the wave matches perfectly like this previous one, the photon will just get absorbed disappear into the matter and then the matter will have a more energy like the black wave second picture is um, shown for NMR the nuclei is a spinning when you have a spinning of a body you are creating perpendicular vector that's the angular momentum. We'll talk about that later. And that angular momentum can be influenced by the light as well. So this 
nuclei will be placed in strong magnetic field so you need to um, include more uh, concept other than electrostatic you have to also include magnetic uh, field concept here but anyway i'm not gonna get into detail here if uh, you have magnetic field and having a uh, charge moving along then you also have you know created magnetic field around the charge so this electric field of the photon and the magnetic field of the photon you also should have a same similar frequency in order to give energy to the matter and to promote the um, rotation just like the previous case for uv electron is moving here for example and then at the moment light is pushing this way then you know certainly electron on this side and that side they feel different force so uh, i mean even excluding the magnetic field uh, force you can see the electron will feel more uh, differentiation and also electron can the negative charge depends on what charge of the photon uh, polarity is located here at the moment it can be either pushed or the pulled either way it feels force for the object that is rotating if you give force you are changing the angular speed that's angular momentum that you are changing so as you change the angular momentum you are basically moving electron from the s orbital angular momentum zero to the p orbital angular momentum one so if the frequency matches the photon will be absorbed and disappear and get transferred into the electron motion the electron get excited if they don't match the photon is not get absorbed but in uh, actual spectroscopy it's not going to be it is absorbed and it is not absorbed there is a uh, um, different degree of absorption out we are using uh, beers lambert law so the absorptivity is defined as negative log transmittance so what we measure is in the instrument the transmitted light if you remember the previous um, slide you give input so we know how much photon what frequency of the photon is given after a fraction of second that goes through the sample going through this kind of interaction with a unique frequency of each bond and atoms and you know uh, motions the changed photon so you can say what is the change the photon some photon is absorbed completely some wavelength of the photon is partially absorbed and some are not absorbed at all so that kind of thing so what you are detecting is what's coming out so transmitted light so that's what you are measuring by comparing the intensity of the light that's given input divided by what's measured after going through the sample so in each instrument you have two split beams of light one directly go to um, detector as original light source then the other one go through the sample and then it get changed then you compare the intensity then you know how much absorbed then chemically you can associate with this a value these are physical measurements but this here is a chemical the concentration how many molecules you have the more molecule you have 
the more absorption you will have, the less transmittance you will have. B is the sample size. Same concentration, but if you have this much of the sample or that much of sample, you can imagine when light passes through, the more sample you have, although it's the same concentration, right? The more chance for the light to get absorbed. So, um, the sample size will affect the absorption. This is called epsilon, called um, extinction coefficient or absorptivity. This is uh, intrinsic characteristic of uh, each matter. Okay, so this is a personal number for each molecule because each molecule has their own unique vibrations and nuclei and electron energies and polarities and everything unique. Um, so the epsilon value is similar to the size, the area of the molecule. If you have a bigger molecule, you know you have more electrons and uh, more protons there. So the light will have a more chance to get interacted with it. That basically is a similar to the square of the diameter of molecule. So you get the concept. The intrinsic value, the absorptivity of the photon by the molecule has to do with the size. The bigger the molecule, better chance. But whatever the bigger size the molecule has, if it's not polar, it's not going to absorb. So you, you need some polarity, you need some size. So here, the dipole moment is telling you the uh, polarity of the molecule squared to it is going to be proportional to the um, absorptivity. So the more polar it is, it's extremely important. So when you measure out and plot out the uh, instrumental data, the more absorption, uh, the more transition uh, of the light, transmittance of the light going through the sample, you go give her, you, you give a uh, more um, intensity and there, whatever the wavelength here is for the energy of the light, uh, you don't have as much absorbance because the frequency here does not match. This means this wavelength, whatever it is, is matching. The light frequency that you give is matching with whatever the um, motion you have. On the same signal, some area is not as intense, meaning that wave length or frequency is a slightly different from what's going on. So the photon is not absorbed as well. So as you can see, it's not just the polarity or the size. You have to match the frequency. Okay, this is the last very important point uh, of this video for um, understanding spectroscopy principle. Um, in the previous slide, I said you need polarity of the compound and the molecule has to be big enough. The, the bigger, the better to absorb more light for the um, greater absorptivity to give longer uh, uh, signal. And then the frequency has to match between the frequency of the object, whether it's a vibration or rotation, um, and also the frequency of the uh, light. So here, input, the light frequency should be similar to the object frequency. Then what's happening? The energy gets transferred from the photon to the object, 
that's called resonance. So resonance takes place, then excitation takes place in the excited state. The energy of the light is stored in the object. When, when it gets relaxed, the photon will be spit out and emitted. Then I must um, tell you about the difference between macro scale versus quantum scale um, you know, absorption of energy. This is what make this is what makes um, understanding of spectroscopy difficult for many students. When you have a macro scale object, if you give some uh, some any amount of the force. It gets accumulated. It doesn't matter how much you give. You can keep accumulating in the object. Object has a continuous way of accepting any amount of energy. Say you have a car moving 10 kilometer, 1000 kilometer. Doesn't matter if you give one Newton, okay, on both. You can give energy to the even car that already has a thousand kilometer. Energy will be absorbed. That's the macro scale object with a many, many uh, different energy level internally. So they are able to accept any amount of uh, given energy, input energy. But for the quantized system, it doesn't work that way. I hope you remember Planck's formula. The light is a mysterious thing, right? Newton, Einstein, all these people, they carried on this question, try to answer. Um, light has no mass. So if you think of the spectroscopy solely with the mass related properties, you get hard time because photon does not have mass. The energy of the photon, although any kind of wavelength you use, they have same speed. Normally, the energy of the matter is m mass times velocity square of half, right? So mass is important, speed is important, but for light, Speed is all same and there is no mass, so the energy of the light has nothing to do with our macro scale concept. It only has to do with the frequency. In order to change one frequency, you need this much more energy. Planck constant. So you want to give more energy with the light. It's not mass related concept. It's how frequent your plus and minus on the photon is changing. And in order to get absorbed in object, you need polarity to interact with the charges of the light. And in order to capture photon, you gotta have a big size and frequency must match. There is no mass, there's no velocity. I mean, it's all in here, but it's not the primary concept you want to use. So in the quantum world, it's like you can have a plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four of charge, but you cannot have a 1.1 plus charge, that kind of thing. In terms of energy, also same thing. For example, you can have 1 kilocalorie, 2 kilocalories, 3, 4 kilocalories of potential energy for a certain compound pi bond, for example. You cannot have anything in the middle. So if you want to push up the electron down here to up there, you cannot accumulate by giving 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and to reach there. You cannot do that. You have to give 
equals or more than the object energy that's required. This delta E. You have to give equal or more energy using photon. Okay? But photon has frequency only. So when you give more energy, you don't think of more power, massive power. It's more of frequency of the photon you give. So more intense light you give doesn't mean it is more powerful light. More energy light is the light that has a higher frequency with a short wavelength. But you have a more photon and each photon can carry different amount of energy to make the energy more powerful with the same wavelength of 200 nanometer then you give more intense light meaning more photon numbers so to wrap up in a molecule you have all kinds of wave of charges going on in vibration in rotations you want to detect some particular you give unique frequency of light that matches with the motion of the object. You choose the right frequency. Then when you expect this frequency get absorbed, you know that's done by polarity and the frequency. So when you have a big A absorption, you get big signal. When you have weak absorption, you have weak signal. Nonpolar compound gives nonpolar non bond gives no signal, no absorption. You have small absorption, but you have a 10 times more uh, concentration of it, then you get 10 times more absorption. That's it for now. See you next time.